sometimes Rovelli reduces this to an epistemological limitation, but that superpositions don't have an ontological properly status, but it, they're simply an expression of the limitation of our knowledge, or also maybe uh, in the truth in reality, but they are epistemological. Probability means, from my limited view, I can say this is the most probable way. But I'm here a little bit more speculative. Maybe it's just that I'm also here seduced by my philosophical spirit. I nonetheless like versions, and isn't this the whole point of all those double slit experiments and so on, to prove that in some, it's not enough to say if there are many electrons, depending on observation and measurement, they can act like a wave or like particles. Isn't it that that's the point they try to prove? Even if you do this experiment particle after particle, still, if you don't observe it, you get a wave. If you observe it, you get particles. But you know, what I want to say is that so still, if you do it, uh, 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 the point is still that if you do it even with one particle after the other, they still behave as part of a way and the conclusion that I like speculatively, I want to be beaten here by Lee, I don't know how he will reply, is that uh, in some sense, even one particle takes all possible paths, uh, virtually, in a superposition, not in reality. But uh, I, this is the question that bothers me. Some of the quantum physicists are afraid to make the step that I'm tempted to make, that there simply is, not in a metaphysical sense, another reality, but another level of reality which doesn't behave in the way our time-space ordinary reality coordinates determine that we should behave. You know, I follow here closely all the arguments, for example, Rovelli as a relationalist. He tries to reject the conclusion of all these Zeilinger and so on experiments that with entangled particles, that there is an instant communication, or however you call it, interaction, faster than the speed of life. He, in his radical relationary stance, he claims that, no, to see this, that they are entangled, you would have to have one divine observer observing at the same time both. But you never had this. The observer has to be somewhere. He always gets the information with a delay and so on and so on. But again, it, you now, in a good sense, ruined my enjoyment a little bit. Because, uh, uh, you know, I was so glad discovering how deep quantum uh, physicists are in philosoph uh, philosophical speculations. And then you told me basically, yes, but they are already doing philosophy in their own way. No, it's not this nice surprise that you see even the most radical empirical scientists uh, are caught in this, you know. But then in that sense, you know what would have been my counter argument to you? But didn't even, uh, even uh, Einstein and Bohr, in their crucial revolutions, they were not simply empirical scientific thinking. There was always a moment of philosophical, properly philosophical thinking. Because, you know, what Einstein did concerning time, space, relativity, blah, blah, passage from uh, 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 to, to uh, <coughs> global general relativity. What she saw, and this is a philosophical insight, is that we have to change the meaning of what temporal distance means, temporality, time, space, and so on. You see, this is, you don't just measure time. At the same time, you discover that you have to redefine what time is, what space is, and so on, and so on, you know. 
And that's why I'm so passionate about it. But I'm silently resigned to the result that this all will not uh, end well for me in the sense that, you know, I don't think I will make a mega breakthrough. I'm much more modest here. I just would like to... So can I ask you now to see, understand where things are? So can I ask you, in my obscene way, an extremely intimate question? You, I think you will refuse to answer. Don't be afraid. Not about your sex life or what. But simply, where do you stand? Do you have a position or you prefer, as, an, as it were, observer, you have debates, not to limit yourself too much? As a character, I would judge you don't want to clearly adopt one position. Or where do you stand in all these conflicts? Yeah, my position is like a good tennis player, not to make unforced errors. So because I don't understand the physics well enough, I like to I, I, we are the same here. Yeah, yeah. making judgments. But unlike you, I have this deep intuition, and intuitions are not worth very much, especially but when you're as uninformed as I am. Sometimes they are the best thing that happens. Yeah, but that... A lot of the issues you're pointing to are epistemological rather than ontological, as you put it. Yes, but my point, the whole point of my effort is to show how what may appear an epistemological issue really is ontological. That that this is, if you want my, what I'm looking in quantum physics, if you want it in one sentence, is that what appears an epistemological limitation is already an ontological feature of the thing itself. Isn't this the whole point of superpositions, indeterminacy, and so on? That it's not just epistemological. Continuous in that it's in the thing itself. But now, that's why I look forward also to the debate with Sabine Horsenfelder, because I know that she is the superdeterminist, you know. But it's a nice idea but then, at least I followed some debates with her when you push her closer at what she means by superdeterminism, it gets a little bit unclear to me. <laughs>